Well, forgive me for being emotional. I think that you guys don't know this. I'm not a high-low guy emotionally. I never have been. I'm part of it. Um, in 98, I lost my cousin. He, he was the pilot in the Navy. Stationed in San Diego, Coronado, and uh, it was a helicopter crash. Um, you know, his widow comes to every game. She lives here in Atlanta. Um, two sons. And it was March 19, 1998, my senior year of college. Um, and I say that because I've, you know, I talked to you guys and I, I told you guys I did a breakfast club this year with our group and I've never been able to talk about my cousin. And I talked to our guys in the breakfast club about that. Um, and I just told the guys, uh, one thing I failed to mention is that to this day, I still have a hard time looking at helicopters. There's just certain things you don't get over. Uh, today's that day. Uh, I never had a personal relationship with Kobe. Uh, he, he's spoken to me a bunch of times, and he's always told me, um, he respects me, and he respects the work that I've done, and he's watched me from afar as a head coach and as an assistant. He said it to me in Philly. He said it to me in L.A. Um, and it's who Kobe is and what I know of Kobe. What I respect the most, you know, I grew up on the West Coast. I'm a Laker fan by, <laughs> as a child. And I've had to denounce being a Laker fan once you get into the profession. Um, but I've always respected his greatness because of his detail and his passion and the intensity of what of which he plays. But there's nothing more than the respect I have for him as a father. Um, every image you see of him post-retirement is with his daughters and with his family. Everything you see online, on Twitter, um, is about positivity. He's encouraging others, um, retweeting positive comments to others. Um, and I think it's been the biggest transformation of a competitor to a human being that I've ever seen. And that's the sad part about today is he was someone that everyone looks up to, especially this, this generation of players. Um, and to see the way he was coming out of retirement and playing to being just a leader of people, WNBA, AAU programs, uh, children's books, we lost a leader. And, you know, it's hard. Our locker room is, is shaking. The NBA is shaking. The community is shaking. Everyone is. Um, because at the end of the day, you respect what he's been able to accomplish for so many years in so many different ways. So today's tough. You know, as a competitor in our sport, it's it's really tough to – navigate through today. Should we play? Shouldn't we play? It's not up to me. Um, today is not going to be the end of morning. Um, it's really just a start. And 
You know, I, I told our guys in there, I'm not a high-low guy, and why? And they understood that because of the Breakfast Club. They know my story. Um, but it's a reminder of perspective as to why and to what, um, you know, what's most important. And the now is most important. The who, who, who are you, who do you need to say hello to? Who do you need to reach out to? Um, the perspective of all this is, is tough because Kobe's untouchable in a lot of those guys' eyes. Any questions? When you think of what Kobe meant to the game and the sport, uh, and sport overall, what is it about to you? Well, in a lot of ways, you know, when we speak of greatness, we, we speak of the accomplishments. What any competitor knows about Kobe is the work and the detail you know the the understanding of the NBA rule book so he can find an advantage offensively um, being there early working on you know footwork of one post move for an hour and the repetition of it uh, hiring and I know the guy hiring Mike Procopio um, to do his personal scouting reports and know exactly how every defender is going to defend them, where they're going to help from. Um, you know, he, he paid money for a coach that wasn't in the NBA to personally scout how he was going to be defended. Um, so when you think of you think of greatness, it's not just the accomplishments; it's, it's what he poured into it. I don't know. You know, it's. Um, I'm, I'll feel this way for a while. So I'm sure the players will. Um, I don't know the answer to that. And I think it's tough to play. Um, I think it will be tough. And, you know, and you, we've all experienced tragedy at some point. And the response is, you know, individually you have to mourn and grieve how you how you feel most appropriate as a team I don't know you know how you do it but um, I think we'll do what we're asked to do and we'll try and make the most of it Trey's been very vocal on social media I believe he trained with Kobe and was close with Kobe did you have any words especially just the Trey on how to no we we sat as a group and a couple guys shared their individual stories um that they have with Kobe, um, you know, I'll let I'll let Trey explain his. Um, but he had been in contact with them. Um, you know, I think they said it had been the three NBA games this year, and two of them were ours uh, in LA and in Brooklyn. But yeah, you know, they're all just kind of shaking up right now. I can't imagine that you've experienced anything like this as a head coach. So. If that you do play, how how do you coach a game like this? Well, you definitely have to take in everyone's emotions, um, understanding that side of it, and um, you know, at some point, and I don't know if today is the day, but at some point, um, the perspective and the reality of it kicks in, and understanding, you know. What do you learn? What you know? What's you know? Especially from a player like Kobe, it's what would Kobe have done? How would he have approached it? Um, what made him great? And to honor him is to duplicate what he's done, which is compete, prepare, um, be intense and passionate about your, your craft, your profession. Uh, we have a ton of young guys in there that are still learning the NBA. And that's, you know, no better example of, of a player and no better example of a person. So 
I think it's really just understanding the emotions of the day and um, just moving forward regardless of, you know, how guys handle it and keeping that in perspective and understanding.